There are so many of God's characteristics that we love to proclaim. So many of God's characteristics that we love to celebrate. Just a couple of days ago, I was with a group of senior hires and we spent some time looking at Mark chapter 2, verses 13 to 17. This is the story of when Jesus invites Levi, the tax collector, to follow him. And Levi throws a party, and this party is full of other tax collectors and sinners. And the religious leadership of Jesus' day challenged Jesus. They say, Jesus, why are you associating? Why are you partying? Why are you accepting these tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus responds with these wonderful words that it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. And that Jesus' mission is to come for the broken. Jesus' mission is to come for the outcast. Jesus' mission is to come for the unrighteous and to draw them back to God through himself. Uh, We love this story because it speaks of those characteristics of God that we love. It speaks of God's love for humanity. It speaks of uh, the open invitation for all people to place their faith in Jesus Christ and follow him. It speaks of God's mercy. It speaks of God's compassion. It speaks of God's forgiveness. Uh, We love to read about, we love to speak about, we love to sing about these characteristics of God. But there's one characteristic of God that we don't like to talk about. There's one characteristic of God that we probably don't sing about very often. We might get a little embarrassed when we read about it in the Bible, And we're probably hesitant to bring it up to our unbelieving friends and neighbors. And this characteristic of God is God's judgment. But it's important to recognize that judgment is just as much of an aspect of God's character as is love, as is forgiveness, as is compassion. And it is necessary that we worship a just God who will judge. Psalm 58 gives us a little bit of insight into this characteristic of God and why it's so important. The psalm begins this way. Do you rulers indeed speak justly? Do you judge people with equity? These questions are obviously leading to the answer that no, that the leaders of the day are not just that they are not equitable, that they are leading their people in broken and sinful and selfish ways that is causing much hurt, destruction, and pain. Well, verse 2 continues, No, in your heart you devise injustice, and your hands mete out violence on the earth. Even from birth the wicked go astray. From the womb they are wayward, spreading lies. Their venom is like the venom of a snake like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears, that will not heed to the tune of the charmer, however skillful the enchanter may be. There's a lot of beautiful word pictures here trying to describe evil. The psalmist is saying, you are not just, you are not equitable. And he gives a reason why. It's their hearts. Their hearts are wicked. Their hearts are against God. Their heart's natural default is a default of injustice. It's a default of violence against others. This is sinfulness. There is sinfulness in the world. You know, it's helpful to sometimes distinguish. Sometimes we talk about evil in general. And there's a tremendous amount of evil in general in our world. We see the evil that hurricanes and tsunamis and tornadoes cause. But one subset of evil is sin. Uh, One author defines sin as culpable evil. It is the evil that individuals are responsible for. And that's what's being spoken of here. Injustice is a sin. It is a culpable evil. Violence against other people is a sin. It is culpable evil. There is evil in the world and it hurts and it harms and it destroys. Verse 6. This is the psalmist's cry for God to act. Break the teeth in their mouths, O God. Lord, tear out the fangs of those lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away. When they draw the bow, let their arrows fall short. 
May they be like a slug that melts away as it moves along, like a stillborn child that never sees the sun. More graphic imagery of the psalmist calling for God's judgment. It's calling for God to judge. It's calling for God to punish. It's calling for God to completely get rid of the sin that they are seeing. And it sounds harsh to hear those calls uh, for judgment. It seems harsh to hear those calls for punishment, but we have to understand them for what they are. Calling God to rid the world of evil Calling God to rid the world of sin is, in fact, praying for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. You see, judgment is a necessary aspect of our God. Why? Because there is evil. Because there is sin. And if the kingdom of God is ever going to come in its fullness, a kingdom of justice, a kingdom of equity, a kingdom of love, a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of provision, then this evil and this sin must necessarily be dealt with. It must be defeated. It must be destroyed. It must be wiped from the presence of this earth. And that is why God must be a God of judgment and is a God of judgment. Because in order for his kingdom to come, sin must be dealt with. Now let me get personal here for a moment because it's easy to read these words or listen to the psalmist and get in our minds a whole host of other people that deserve God's punishment because of their sin and injustice. But if we listen to the words of the Bible, if we listen to the words of Jesus, if we listen to the words of Paul, we realize that we are sinners and that we need God to do a work in our lives as well. The fact is we need God's judgment. But here's where God's judgment is matched with his mercy, his grace, his compassion, and his love. He sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to take the penalty that we deserve. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to become human, to accept the judgment on our behalf. Jesus has been judged so that we can escape the penalty of judgment. Jesus has been judged so that God's kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven. You see, even the cross of Jesus Christ displays the reality that our God is a God of justice and a God of judgment, and necessarily so. That's the only way sin and evil are going to be eradicated from this world. Well, I'll let you read the last couple of verses, but it concludes with a note of hope. And I want to conclude that way because God being a judging God causes us to hope. It gives us conf confidence it gives us confidence in God's kingdom and it gives us confidence in God's future because it is only through this attribute of God that sin and evil will be ultimately eradicated. And what a glorious day that will be.